Hi there guys, Ken from Miniature War Gaming Warriors and today we're going to be painting some Lord of the Rings Army of the Dead in contrast as well as a bit of airbrushing. It's a really quick and simple technique but it looks fantastic. By now if you've been following the channel for a while you'll know that I love contrast paints and I've been finding ways to incorporate contrast into different types of painting and this is the result I got. So the first thing we're going to do is obviously we're going to spray it grey, grey primer. I used an airbrush but you can just use any normal grey, doesn't really matter, just as long as it's like a dark grey all over. You can always prime with a white, it will give you a brighter finish. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use this warp lightning from the contrast range by Games Workshop, put it all over this model, literally soak it in warp lightning. Lightning. This is going to be the quickest and easiest step and technically you can say they're done after you've done this If you really want some quick easy models to do you can literally just coat them with a spray primer of grey or white And then just coat them with this warp lightning and they're done technically they're finished But you know as well as I know here at miniature war gaming warriors We don't just do the very basics. We're going to take this one step further We're going to get some dry brushing on the go and we're also going to do the bases and I can finally test out that sweet sweet airbrush I've really been looking forward to using it. I've used it quite a few times times of basing but this is like the first time I've used it on multiple colours with something so well well excited and while I've got 10 seconds why not mention the Facebook and the Patreon group. Facebook group is open to anybody wishing to join you can share any sort of pictures and just talk about the hobby in general. It's a really fun and friendly environment and I look forward to seeing you over there and if you really want to help out the channel why not consider donating to Patreon. It's set from $1 a month and it really helps out the channel. It goes towards helping me to upgrade for sound equipment, lighting bits and bobs just to make these videos that little bit extra right so let's get on with the video as you can see i'm now dry brushing some old and gray i have got a very new and very uh fluffy shall i say uh dry brush i got it from uh, the range if you're in the uk you'll know what that is it was only a couple of quid so i've seen a lot of people use these big dry brushes and they're meant to be really good and so i'm just going over with a really heavy dry brush of old and gray i'm doing this because i want the raised edges to pop so i want it to give that ghosty and goo sort of feel and doing this with the old one gray really does make it pop out just by doing this step can really enhance the model make it look 10 times better this is why it's worth taking your time and just planning out the model or how you want it to look planning the colors that you're going to use on your model is really important it is worth taking that extra little bit of time just to plan everything out make sure you're happy with it and then you get a better result in the end right so now we're going to move on to the basin aspect of the model the actual model itself is painted it's done so you could say that's it, but we're going to take it one step further and I'm going to use polyester. Basically it's the teddy bear filling that you get inside most soft toys. Um, in the UK you can buy this separately which is quite handy. I've got a big packet of it um, that I got from Hobbycraft. Putting some super glue down, you could use other types of glue. Uh, you could use hot glue or you could use PVA. But super glue really bonds really quickly. I've pulled a sheet of it off and I'm just wrapping it around the base of the model here. I might have used a little bit too much, but I'd rather have a bit too much than not enough. I think it adds to it. So I'm just literally looping it round and I'm trying to stick it down quickly with the super glue. Trying not to get my fingers caught in it as you'll, can, as you'll see in a second. I use a cotton bud just to hold it in place, just to make sure that it's firmly down. Okay, so this is the first bit with the airbrush. I've got warpstone glow. Of course you have to thin these paints down. Um, I use, just use some water for this. It's literally the consistency of semi-skim milk. Comes out the airbrush just fine. I'm spraying at the minute on a 20 psi and it's absolutely fine what i'm looking to do is just cover all this polyester just completely try and avoid the model as much as possible some little bits are going to end up getting on it you can't help that but i am literally trying to cover it in the whole color and as you can see with an airbrush it just covers so fast it's just incredible how good an airbrush is it is a really really good tool just like a lot of other people having an airbrush it was a really really daunting experience because you don't know what you're doing it's such a big monetary investment but once you get it and you get your hands on with it everything changes i found that you know just playing with it it was just an amazing tool that i would recommend to anyone that does modeling so the next color i'm going to use is moot green again i thin this down with some water and i'm just going to do this over patches over the uh, warpstone glow this is literally because i just want to break up that warpstone glows color and um, with a different shade of green just to give it like a ghosty sort of misty effect Okay, this is the last bit. It's uh, just a white highlight over the uh, polyester. This is literally just to make it stand out and pop a little bit. It's probably one of the most delicate steps because you don't want to go too heavy with the white and you don't want to go too light to make it not noticeable. So you just want to find that right balance. And I think I just nail it just slightly with this model. 
So what's my experience with using the airbrush and the contrast paints with these Lord of the Ring models? I absolutely love it and it works fantastic for these. You can get an army of these done in a couple of hours. It doesn't take long at all. Um, if you've really been holding back and trying it out using the contrast paints with it and an airbrush at the same time, give it a go. And like I said earlier, if you really want to help the channel out and make it grow, don't forget to like, share and subscribe and also consider donating to Patreon and joining our Facebook group. So this is the end result and I'm very happy indeed. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again very soon. Now, where's that Gambo Liam got to? He's meant to be painting up some Walking Dead I believe. Hmm, not another game to play. We'll see you again very soon.